So hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Intellect's webinar series. So our webinar today is entitled Leading and Lagging Indicators, Revolutionizing Safety Performance in Oil and Gas. And facilitating our webinar today will be Steve Buffett and Gurpreet Lawani. Now Steve and Gurpreet are both oil and gas solution specialists here at Intellex, and today they're going to be sharing some of their industry knowledge and experience with us in regards to leading and lagging indicators. So at this point I'm going to hand it over to Steve and Gurpreet and we'll get started. Thank you very much, JP. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. My name is Steve Buffett. I am here with my colleague, uh, Gapreet. Hey guys. And just as uh, JP had mentioned, uh, we've been with Intellex for a couple of years and, and for the past uh, about year, year and a half, we've been uh, working on the oil and gas team. So we've got a number of clients in the industry uh, that uh, we can reference in the future. And you know, for, for today's purposes, uh, we're just gonna get started, um, which would bring me to our agenda slide. As for an agenda, we're for the next 30 minutes, we're going to take a deep dive into the indicators, uh, the leading and lagging indicators, the reason why we're here today, uncover some of the data behind those indicators, uh, talk about some key tools, best practices in order to be able to improve those indicators. So to kind of kick things off here, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Gapri to get things started. Great. So I'm sure we're all here today because, you know, we're trying to develop that proactive approach to safety. We're trying to seek that continuous improvement and basically have an incident-free workplace. Now, typically to measure how good or how bad we're doing, we would uh, look at indicators. And as you can see on the screen there, we have some popular lagging indicators and leading indicators. So things like your fatality, your lost time days, your recordable injuries, and the leading indicators obviously being your near misses and at-risk behaviors. Now, we found that many organizations, specifically in the oil and gas industry, um, are putting a lot of emphasis in monitoring lagging indicators, which is fine, but a lot of the monitoring and an analyzing is being done in the last stages. So at the end of the month or the end of the year, you'd be looking at a report that tells you that, okay, we've had so many lost time days uh, or so many recordable injuries, but what we need to do is we need to examine the processes that lead to these failures and basically monitor how effective our control mechanisms are in preventing these negative outcomes. So in other words, uh, before we can focus on the lagging indicators, we need to make sure we have a better picture of the proactive measures, which are your leading indicators, so that we can reduce uh, those risks. Yeah, and to kind of add on to that, uh, I mean, you know, it's more along the lines of taking a, a reactive approach uh, and a proactive approach. Now, again, we're always reacting to the lagging indicators, and, and really the, the whole point on today's webinar is to really make you realize that we need to be proactive. Let's, let's kind of be proactive on those near misses, on those at-risk behaviors to therefore decrease those lagging indicators. And if we dive uh, deeper into this, uh, we can see that numerous studies have been uh, carried out. Numerous studies have shown that if you pay more attention to your near misses and your at-risk behaviors, and you, you proactively manage and prevent them, you will obviously um, have, a, ha have a lower LTI and, and fatality rate at the end of the day. And for example, here we have a, a research that was carried out by ConocoPhillips Marine in 2003, and they found that, you know, with 3,000 near misses, that, that translated to about one fatality. So as you can see, guys, I mean, you need to track your near misses. You need to, most importantly, focus on those leading measures, and that will change your overall safety performance. Now, um, we all know the, the, what, what lagging indicators represent. Obviously, it shows that we have a decrease in efficiency. It results in loss of productivity lower end results, higher direct costs. So we're getting more government fines. We're, you know, our insurance premiums are going up. We have, and that actually shows that we have a lack of visibility. So we may, may not have the right access to data or our data may be unorganized. Now we've uh, come up with some leading measures to keep in mind when uh, to, to basically improve your overall safety performance. Uh, so things like streamlining your incident reporting process and implementation of best practices. Uh, you wanna make sure that yes, you have a better, a good process in place so when that incident occurs, someone's reporting it and the end of the investigation and when that incident's actually closed out, 
you have that best practice uh, filtering out through your facilities. People are aware of, of, of what, what you found in that incident. Um, things like work activities needs to be subject to hazard analysis and risk assessment. You need to have more uh, written work procedures for different critical activities that you have. And obviously, you want to make sure that your employees are working safely. So by implementing behavior-based observations, you're actually helping them to, to perform safe work activities. Now, guys, I mean, this list can go on and on. Um, but what we want to focus on today is how to streamline incident reporting and how to help you implement and share those best practices. Now, uh, things to keep in mind are, for example, you want to measure indicators such as incident reported within the first 24 or 48 hours. So what this will give you is that, that proactive approach. You'll see that, okay, these incidents are getting reported as they occur. And the sooner you know they are reported, the sooner you can investigate them. Yeah, and I mean, if I can add in there, just being able to change the behavior of your employees, making sure that the incidents do get reported, and, and especially within the first 24 hours, they're getting in the routine of submitting those incidents and therefore tracking those near misses, tracking those leading indicators to overall bring down those lagging indicators. And which leads us to the near misses. I mean, so once you have that incident report, being reported, you will, may will also want to track your near misses and make sure that you're, you're following up on those and eliminating those. Um, which leads us to incident investigation. So once we've got those reported incidents, reported near misses, we want to make sure that those investigations are completed on time because, again, the sooner we get to those investigation, the investigation phase, the, the faster we can assign corrective and preventive actions.